And we thank God for women around the world. Today we celebrate you. Today we honor you women. Today we want you to know that we appreciate every single contribution you have made since you were created on this planet called Earth. That means every single, single woman that God allowed to be on this planet. We salute you and we celebrate you in the name of Jesus. And you are indispensable to us and to this generation. You are indispensable. Every church needs you. Every government needs you. Every civilization needs you. Buli kanisa ekwetaga, buli gwanga likwetaga, buli chivina chona chikwetaga, ne government ekwetaga. And do you know when people began to think about life? Years ago, when people begin to think about this life, and began to think about what landscape and what this earth means. When they began to think about vegetation and what this entire earth means to the human race. Do you know that they came up with the terminology? Called, called Mother Earth. That. When they refer the scientists and in the people around the world, when they are talking about earth, they refer to earth as Mother Earth. Uh, because they figure out that life comes out of motherhood. But when they talk about also about human life, in the book of Genesis, they refer to human life from Eve and they say, and Eve became the mother of all living. Uh, and Eve became the mother of all living. Eva in so when you cut off motherhood and womanhood then the world as we know it will cease to be what it is today and that's why God hates with every ounce that is within him. Now I'm going to say this for the people that will watch this tape, just this statement. That God hates with everything within his soul and in his heart. The spirit and the nature of homosexuality. 
chavo abayino mukwano gwe bikukujju well, probably that's a little bit above you but we live in the world that living that kind of a lifestyle is very very normal but without life giving forth, without women giving forth, we, we would lose an entire generation. Not only generation, but the entire earth will be wiped out. Years ago, Years ago, because of the population of China, China came up with what we called one child policy. China And if you are two babies, one are to die. It was against the law for many years in China to have a second baby. Until they have realized a few years ago that what they have is an older generation. They no longer have the middle gap. And the generation is dying away and they have no people to fill in the gaps. And now they said, okay, all right, okay, two children, two children, two children. But what they didn't understand was this. That when God created human people, he said, let them fill the earth. Let them fill let the entire world be filled with people. Are you getting what I'm saying? Let the whole world be filled with people. And some people are thinking about what they eat and all that. The God who said, let there be light will also create enough food for people that live on this planet. So population growth is not God's problem. And it will never be a nation problem. It is greed that is causing all the problems that we have. And so we celebrate you, wonderful women. As I said earlier on, being a female is not anybody's choice. Being male is not anybody's choice. God allowed us to be male and female. But to be a male man is a choice. And to be a woman female is a choice. Because there are many female that behave and talk like men. Sometimes you wonder in marriage who is who. <laughs> Tell your neighbors and neighbor. I, I, I'm sorry, but who is who? who, is who? Uh, who, 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 who is who? Oh, what are you going to be? Are you going to be a male, female, or you are going to be a female male in that home when you grow up? Because 
<laughs> and, and you see in every generation there is an illumination there is a new understanding there is a new revelation and I'm saying this because it's women's day so I want to make a few comments and uh, then a few years ago there was a new understanding a new revelation that came through our sisters in the US. And they are very oppressed. And so we are going to come up with what we call the liberation of the women. And so they introduced what we call equal rights. And they say if a man can put on a pant, a woman can put on a pant. If a woman can put on a jacket, a man can put on a jacket. So it is equal rights. And when that was introduced, divorce <laughs> shoot up to 60%. People don't understand that God created us the way we are because of responsibilities. You have a womb. I don't have a womb. And that's the reason why you do what you do. And that womb comes with a different kind of responsibility than my responsibility. And without understanding that, we miss an entire generation. The other day a man stood up he was trying to run for a political office to become the president of the United States of America. And he has been soliciting fans and talking to voters. Until he figured out that there's no hope for him. And so he called his supporters at his headquarters to tell them I'm bowing out of the presidential race. And then the person that introduced him said, <laughs> he was a male, female. And he says, ladies and gentlemen, putting in a jacket like I'm putting a real man. And says, ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce to you my husband. No, but it's a man who and when the husband came to the podium, the first thing he did is to kiss the husband who is male female. <laughs> they introduced themselves. The point I'm trying to make in this entire church, we have people who are going to affect this nation when they make the right decisions. Every female who will make a decision to be a woman. 
you will touch and impact an entire generation in the name of Jesus. If you are a woman, say yes. Say, I'm going to change my generation. I'm going to touch my world. I'm going to nurture children that will impact this nation. Say, in my hands is the power to raise presidents. Is the power to raise doctors. Is the power to raise politicians. Is the power to raise preachers. Is the power to raise men and women of all colors. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you hearing what I'm saying? That power is within your hands. In his book, The Mustard Seed, his Excellency Yoel Kaguta Museven said that her mother gave up birth to her and finally her mother picked him up and brought him to Kaguta house. And today we have a president who has ruled over us for the last 30 years. <laughs> you know, because of a mother. You know, you know. Now you may say, I believe in Bobby Wan. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the power of motherhood and the power of mama. <laughs> You see, you people see things through politics. I'm not talking about politics now. You can like Mr. President. You may hate Mr. President, but you cannot deny the fact that he has changed the political landscape of Uganda. That cannot be denied. And when Mr. President began to talk about his life, he doesn't talk about his father. He talks about his mother. That is the power you have. That's the, you you have. That's the power you have. In your hands lies the power to change a generation. In your hands lies the power to, to change a nation. In your hands lies the power to affect a generation. And that power many times is not with us men. Many times is with you women. Is with you women. Is with you women. Is with you women. What you say, what you do, those are seeds that will affect and impact a generation. The way you live, the way you conduct yourself is a seed to this generation. To some people, you are simply an instrument. To some people, you are simply a children factory. But before God, you are a power, you are a life, you are a, a mentor, you are a communicator, you are a powerhouse. In your hands, the nation will rise. In your hands, the nation will be built. In your hands, houses will be built. And the scripture says, a wise woman builds a house with her own hands. That is the power of a woman. 
That is the power of a female who has made up her mind to be a woman. And time would fail me to mention about men, many women around the world that have made an immense contribution towards our civilization and development. Every field of this life, medicine, politics, athletics, music, there are many women around the world. Many, 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 many who have touched this generation by their life and their giftings. Maybe it in finances, be it in governance, be it in politics. And we thank God for each and every one of them. We thank God for their graces they have graced upon this land. When you look at this nation, right from honorable speaker to all these other women, that are doing many things in government and around the world. And so we celebrate them and we say thank you. There are many that have done so and there are men that are still doing so. But there are many, many women that are doing things in the background and they are silent. And my heart calls for them and I want to speak to those kind of women. Thank God for honorable speaker, Ms. Rebecca Kadaga. Thank God for the, 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 the former president of Sierra Leone. Called Sherry. Thank God for Miss, Mrs. Mandela. And many, many, many women that have impacted this world. But I want you to know there are many women in the silent who have raised children who have cried Lord raise my children and those are the women that my heart goes for and you have all my praise those that have stood and said I know my husband has gone but I'm going to stay for my child I'm going to do the best that I can some people have no children but they have adopted other children and who knows what will become of those children we may sometimes give birth and we move on. But we may never give up on children. And we salute you. Your name may not come in the genius records. Your name may not be known around the world. But I want you to know when you get to heaven, God will shake your hands and say, Thank you for praying for that child. Thank you for praying for that cousin. Thank Thank you for taking that child to school. Thank you for being there for those children. Because out of those children, a doctor was raised. A, a, a pharmacist was raised. A pastor was raised. A deliverer was raised. So I salute you. Mothers now, mothers to be. I salute you. I salute you. I salute you. Thank God for those that have gone before us. But those cannot make a nation. It is mothers, mothers, mothers. And I'm not talking about simple natural mothers. I'm talking about mentors who are mothers. I'm talking about spiritual mothers. I'm talking about women who are praying for others. That's what I'm talking about.
Njogera kuwa mama abota sobola kulaba mulwatu mu nayenga bali eyo mukasirise basabira abana babwe bakuza abana babwe batendeka abana babwe babulire chokola baba la gensemu eri bali mu maso batende basabira abana abo ne bakuza abasumba ni mwa abana mu mvuta abasumba abasawo abasomesa abakulembeze abantu abo mugaso mugwanga lino ba mama abo and I'm talking about mother's past. I'm talking about mother's present. I'm talking about mother's future. And I'm talking about mothers who are maids in our little homes. Njogera kuba mama abo abachala abayamba kawaka mu wafe mu mayumba but most of us don't really think about so much ah tebisere bisinga obunji tubatunulira kyamuli we leave them with our children to walekera bana bafe and then natural our children ne bakuza bana bafe when we come back home we are so tired we tukoma otujja i salute those maids namusaba chala and i bless them in the name of jesus those are my heroes today those are my people today and i pray that god will reward them I pray that God will raise them to be mighty women and mighty men in their generation that every seed they are planted will be watered and God will give them children that will come from their hearts in the name of Jesus. Many times when we read the story of Moses, the emphasis is about Moses, 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 Moses. Most of us name our children after Moses. And I have a son by the name Moses. And probably you know somebody else that is called Moses. And if you have been around church, you will hear more about Moses. At the Red Sea, the miracles, the miracles, the signs, and the wonders, how God delivered the children of Israel, how God used him mightily. When you talk about the law, you talk about Moses. But that does not impress me. Today, what impresses me, there is a little woman that is known so little about him. The Bible does not even give a name. The Bible, the Bible simply said that I was a woman from the Levi tribe. In the book of Exodus, chapter 2, verses 1, look at what the Bible says. And went the woman out of the house of Levi and took a wife, a daughter of Levi. No name. Everybody say no name. Look at the next verse. And the woman conceived and bare a son. When she saw that it was a godly child, she hid three months. And they're talking about Moses' mother. And there's nothing much we know about her. But what I want you to know, there would be no Moses without that woman. And we salute Moses' mother. And when the Bible begins to speak about her, in the book of Hebrews chapter 11 from verses 23. This is what the Bible says. By faith, when Moses, when he was born, was he three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child and were not afraid of the king's command. The mother of Moses took a bullet for Moses. 
And she said, I will do the very thing that I can in my power. To ensure that Moses is saved. And the Bible says in that verse. Because there are things she saw in Moses. That only the mother can see. The day Moses was born. The mother looked at Moses and saw a leader. The Bible says she saw a proper child. A proper child. In, in, in spite of the surroundings. I know, give me your bag, please. The Bible says, Bible she saw in Moses, and she said, Moses is a proper child. When Moses was one day old, she prophesied over Moses. She said, Moses, I don't care. You were born in times that are very, 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 very dangerous. I know, Moses, there is a price on your head. Moses, Pharaoh is looking for you. But I'm going to protect you, Moses. I'll protect you with my love. I, I will shield you. I'll be there for you. I don't care what I don't care what the daddy say. I don't care what Pharaoh say. Whether daddy is here or daddy is not here. Moses, I'm shielding you and I'm protecting you. You are my own. You are my child. So she kept saying, she kept speaking, she kept declaring. And, and I know every time Miriam would take Moses to the water, I know the mother would say a prayer, please, Lord, protect my child. My child is in your hands. God, you can do something. So she made a decision to protect Moses with everything that is within her. She made a decision that Pharaoh to touch Moses, he has to go through me. Listen what I'm going to say. The difference between your success and your failure as a woman. Is in the power of your choice. Now when she made up her mind. And the choice was a choice of faith. God Almighty honored that faith. And guess what? A few months later, the Moses Pharaoh was looking for ended in his courtyard. And Pharaoh paid for the school fees of Moses and the caretake of Moses and that was the mother. And Oh, yeah, mama, we be, uh, we just have a Listen mama, what I'm going to say next. You the mother of Moses. We mama and Musa. Do the best you can. One day Pharaoh will pay you for raising Moses. Rumu, falawa ali kusasulo ro kuza Musa. He will raise up Moses in the palace. But also, he will pay you as the mother. In other words, if you make up your mind and a decision, 
no salir ahora. And that decision is based on your beliefs, on your faith in God. That decision will bring returns in the near future in the name of Jesus. And so Moses grew up by a mother that we don't know so much about. But when we get to heaven, most of us think that God will reward Moses more. All the reward will go to Moses' mother. And God will say to Moses' mother, Thank you so much for making that decision, for keeping Moses alive. Thank you so much for taking care of Moses. And that's what womanhood is all about. Womanhood is simply a choice. You can choose to be famous by emulating famous principles. And my prayer is to all of you wonderful ladies that in the years to come you know what? Every woman stand up. I want to say this when you're My prayer is for me that next time, next year, when we celebrate Women's Day, one of you. One of you must be celebrated. Thank God for the Navagalek of Uganda. And what she has done. And where she is. I thank God for Mrs. Miss Rebecca Kadaga and what she has done. Listen what I'm going to say. The land of Uganda is very virgin. We need people that can be recognized in government, in teaching, in society, in every place. And so we want you to believe God. So that next year when we celebrate whether 100 people or 10 people or 2 million people that have made a difference as women, I want your name to come up. Say, I received that. Now, when I say that, some of you don't really care what I'm talking about. Because you already made a choice of being a mediocre below average. But I'm talking about people who are saying today, Uganda has not seen anybody like me. By the grace of God, I'm the star that is rising in the name of Jesus. Uh, I'm going to touch my world. I'm going to change my world. In the field that God has called me. Either in music or in the gospel or in accounting. Whichever field. I pray for you, mother. I pray for you, my friend. I pray that God will raise you. And God will raise you. And God will raise you. And God will raise you. That if we don't celebrate anybody on Women's Day, we will celebrate your achievement. We will celebrate your greatness. We will celebrate your faith. We will celebrate you in the name of Jesus. Miss Rebecca Kadaga has made a mark. 
are about to make your mark on now this earth. Are you getting what I'm saying? They have inspired you. But right now, rise up and use the inspiration and do something in the name of Jesus. Someone of them are in their 60s. You are still in your 20s. You are still in your 30s. And listen what I'm going to say. Even if you are in your 60s with God, all things are possible. And if, the, and if the government cannot celebrate you, at least your community will celebrate you. If your community does not celebrate you, at least your church will celebrate you. If our, the church does not celebrate you, let God of the heaven celebrate you. Moses' mother is not celebrated by anybody in the world. But Hebrews acknowledges achievements. I pray for you. Raise those hands. I said, women, raise your hands. I'm going to pray a very simple prayer for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for these wonderful women that they will rise between now and next year. They will rise to believe you for good things and for big things. I pray that you will, you will anoint them to be the great mothers they can be, to be the great leaders they can be, to be the great worshippers they can be. Open up the channels of life in their spiritual womb and let their life impact their world in the name of Jesus. Use them to become an influence and king maker and queen makers in this world. Use them and raise them to be catalysts of change in their generation. And I release blessing upon them. I release greatness upon them. I release wisdom upon them. I release understanding upon them. I release a spirit of discernment upon them. Thank you for changes. World changer. Thank you, Lord, for politicians that you are raising. Thank you, Lord, for presidents that you are raising. Thank you, Lord, for men and women that you are raising in this church. In the name of Jesus. And everybody say, Amen. 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 You may be seated. I want you to believe that. About four years ago, I was really upset and I was really vexed. With our honorable speaker, and this can be on record. When she was appointed back to parliament, as speaker. She called on communication house, and I mean the media house. People of the news. And she says, I want you to go with me to Bujagari. And I want you to see me going in that shrine. To thank God, to thank my judges for giving me this position. And all the media houses and the next Sunday she was in Namirembe Cathedral to say thank you God 
o rwadako sabite yadako na yolekera kasozi na mirembe wagulukulutiko na gamba mukama nkwebaza olwaka fukano and so i pray that if the next woman was going to be speaker and there will be one o muchara agenda okudako agenda okubera omukubiriza wo luchi wa setetetezo pray that she will be a Christian who says thank Jesus. Agenda kuba mulokole agamenti webale Yesu. Hallelujah nene ne bajimudamu. And that parliament has not been without problems. Eh la parliament eyo ebade suse ebizibu binji kubanga budagali yabadaji kulembera. My friend here will tell you. Mukano gwanga wale wana jakuga. We saw the Michael Jackson swinging in the house. Twalaba ba mikairi jackson nga machebe ko la muri buli mwakasi ko jikwate ko in the house kubisera bya to jikwata ko jikwate ko nge chiri muri we saw pigs marching on the steps of parliament twalaba bumutambu za dembe nga buyingira mu parliament the other day two young people jumped out of the balcony and o ebabe gakawo eh mpala chitale za bana balenzi za wanuka mu kibanyi ne zibuka ne zigwa wa but i pray that god will raise godly women and men who will stand in that place ne yesaba katonda wa amanyi ayi musaba kazi na wasaja wa amanyi because that righteousness exalts a nation wa bible ye gamanti obutukiri bubugulu misise gwanga and if you believe god obokiriza katonda you will be next in line god dako if you believe that shout amen. Bobo chikiriza yogera amen nene. If you believe that shout hallelujah. Bobo chikiriza ganti hallelujah.